time to look at our sports uh, news stories with Ayotunde Balogo. Many thanks, Sulaiman. Now, the president of the Nigeria Rowing, Sailing and Canoe Federation, Festus Probeni, is expecting that the technical course being organized for indigenous coaches by the International Olympic Committee, IOC, will help draw more attention to the sport. About 12 coaches are participating in the three-day seminar taking place at the Nigerian Sailing Club in Lagos with a representative from the British rowing body, Sally Mart, teaching the coaches the latest development in the game. Probeni is optimistic that the seminar will enable the sport to have technically sound officials that will enhance its development across the country. Nigeria's Super Falcons have arrived in Abuja after playing a one-all draw in the African Women Nations Cup qualifiers against Senegal. Coach Florence Omaigwami's girls had hoped to secure a precious away victory, but then it wasn't to be, as they were forced to share the spoils with their hosts. The team will immediately begin preparation for the second leg, which takes place on Tuesday, April the 12th. The reigning African champions need just a goalless draw or an outright victory to ensure qualification to the biennial tournament, which will be held in Cameroon later this year. In the Nigeria Professional Football League, Chisom Ibuchulam's goal in the fourth minute for Enugu Rangers was enough to seal the three points against visiting FC Ifaimuba in Enugu. Ifaimuba tried very hard to get an equaliser, which would have kept them on top of the table, but then Rangers stood firm in the match day. 11 fixture. The victory took the Flying Antelopes back to the top of the league table as they continue their chase for the title. Rangers are now top with 21 points from 11 games to Ifaiubar's 19 points from the same number of matches. Andy Carroll's hat-trick dealt another blow to Arsenal's already slim title hopes in the English Premier League despite the Gunners fighting back to draw 3 all at West Ham United. Aston Villa are on the verge of being relegated after a home defeat by Bournemouth, their eighth in a row that has left them 15 points from safety with just five games left. Crystal Palace ended their long wait for a first Premier League win of 2016 as Jason Punchin's goal earned them a vital 1-0 win over Norwich. Southampton defeated Newcastle by three goals to one. Swansea claimed an impressive win against Chelsea uh, and secured their top flight survival. Watford ended a four-match losing run by coming from behind to secure a one-all draw against Everton. And Manchester City also came back from a goal down at the 80 had to beat West Brom 2-1. And that's a wrap on a Sports News. I'm Ayatunde Balogu. Terror suspect Mohamed Abrini arrested in Belgium on Friday. He has admitted being the man in the hut and seen with the suicide bombers at Brussels airport. Abrini, the 31-year-old Belgian of Moroccan origin, confessed to federal prosecutors that he was indeed the man in the hut after being confronted with evidence. According to investigators, Abrini's fingerprints and DNA was found in two safe houses in Brussels, as well as in a car used during the Paris attacks. He allegedly threw his jacket away in a rubbish bin and sold his heart after the incident. Abrini, who is also wanted in connection with the attacks in Paris, is one of the four charged with terror offences. Everyone hates being accused of falsely for an offence they didn't commit, but can you imagine doing time behind bars for a crime you're not guilty of? In this next report, we bring you the story of a U.S. sailor who was wrongfully convicted of rape and murder charges and is finally walked free after spending 33 years in jail. Exonerated prisoner Keith Howard took his first steps to freedom yesterday, one day after Virginia's top court ordered the release of the former U.S. sailor who has spent 33 years in prison. This is what you want our justice system to be about, is these people, because they, they go for the truth. In my case, the egos of those criminals, and I say criminals because I'm talking about the people in Newport News that had me convicted, detectives, prosecutors, judges, forensic scientists, uh, they went out of their way to convict me. They weren't looking for the truth. They were looking for a conviction. 
Howard, who is now 60 years old, was convicted on the basis of a testimony by two experts who said they matched his teeth to bite marks found on the rape victim's legs. It, it hasn't really hit me. I, I don't know. I, I explained to them earlier, it, it's, it's not real. Until I'm going down the road to where I can look out the window and not be obstructed by a dog cage that I would be riding in if I was in the Department of Corrections, or get out here and hug a tree. <laughs> You know, it, it, it's the small things you, you, you lose out on. So I'm going to be overwhelmed I, because I've, I've got to start my life over again. The reliability of bite marks as evidence in a criminal trial has increasingly come under challenge in recent years. It isn't just people that are currently in prison, too. There are at least four pending pretrial cases that we know of in which the state is seeking to use bite mark evidence. So today you can have somebody like Mr. Harward who lost 33 years of his life to bite mark evidence, who we know is absolutely innocent. And on the one hand, we can let him out, but we've learned nothing if those, if we continue to use this evidence, even though we know it has no basis in science. A decision by the Virginia State Court came a day after the state attorney general, Mark Herring, said he believed Howard was innocent. Herring also confirms that the DNA found at the scene actually matched that of Jerry Crotty, who died in an Ohio prison in 2006, and not Keith Howard. According to the Innocence Project, a non-profit legal clinic, Crotty had been a Navy shipmate of Howard's at the time of the murder and rape. Somewhere there. The main news again. President Mohamed Buhari will leave China on Sunday to seek support for the country's infrastructural development. The president, who has been accompanied on the trip by some governors and key ministers, will hold talks with the Chinese president, the premier, and the chairman of the standing committee of the National People's Congress. That's the news at 10 tonight. Many thanks for watching.